So in the wake of the subsidy remover, the nation stands at a crossroad, torn between anticipation and apprehension. Advocates are rather move as a decisive stride towards fiscal prudence, a necessary step towards economic autonomy and resilience, but there are dire consequences uh, for the nation and the policy directions of government has now been uh, called to question on how it's either working or not. As is, uh, what we've seen recently is a rise in the prices of commodities that has really, really brought some turbulence in the socioeconomic life of the average Nigerian. Let's get some insight. Uh, of course, we've been uh, hearing a lot of engagement between the National Assembly and the executive tonight are being joined by the Senate Chair on Finance and the Senator representing Niger East Senatorial District in the National Assembly. Senator Sani Musa joins us live here in Abuja. So thank you so much indeed, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shil. With all what we're seeing, and when you hear the, the military say, don't fear, we don't have any plan to truncate our democracy. What, what sense of that, does, does that give you? Uh, it doesn't give me any 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 anything than the confidence that they are uh, telling themselves within what the ambit of the constitution have chosen for them. And uh, you heard what uh, the chief of army staff have said. They are going to continue to play their constitutional roles, and they believe that their role is for the territorial protection of this country and they will do it without any cause, without any bridge to the Constitution. So, I mean, mm. it's, it's, it's a, a building of confidence mm. to us. And, so, uh, uh, there are those who have their fears about how democracy is being truncated in some part of the, of, of the continent, and uh, what that threat it has been, uh, at least uh, three, four countries uh, in the sub-region, ECOWAS, uh, are being uh, threatened by by military takeovers and those are those who are feeling that when uh, civilian rule is not giving the people the kind of uh, governance that they deserve uh, what uh, what options do they have and god forbid a military takeover in this country for those of us who have experienced it very much you know uh, that your freedom is called to question what kind of challenge does this pose to the political class where you belong uh, she democracy have come to stay in Nigeria. You cannot compare Nigeria and the three other Af African countries we're talking about. Look at the indices. Look at the economic indices. Look at the, 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 the human capital that we have. Uh, now, come on. Uh, when we're talking about real democracy and we want democracy to stay, one thing I believe is that ours is evolving. What we have seen in the uh, Second Republic, Third Republic, and what we are seeing now, they are completely different. We are close to about 20-something years, 24 or 5 years now into this democracy. And I can tell you that we have done very well. This country has done very well. I mean, the economic downturn is everywhere. It's worldwide. Since after the covid Definitely all nations will be hit by this economic crisis. There will be so much of inflation. There will be so much... I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not peculiar to Nigeria at all. It's not. Mm. It's perhaps the handling and, the, uh, and also the manner in which the political class have portrayed themselves and uh, they've conducted themselves, whether or not they're really aware of the plight of the average Nigerian. Uh, Sheun, Sheun, I want us to, to take back our memories. Look at Nigeria 10, 20 years ago. Look at Nigeria today. Will you tell me that there's stagnation? In development and the kind of growth that uh, you are talking about i mean in in a country of over 200 million nigerians all we need to do is to have a long-term planning do we have it and and that is what we are trying to do now you are the, the chair that of the, of the committee on finance and we saw the economic team of the federal government interfacing with you let me ask you quite frankly what can you tell us senator uh, that what did you glean as a major challenge or problem 
of this country from the engagement you, you had with the economic team? You see, what we have seen is that uh, there has been a lot of decay for a very long time. The managers of our economy for some time over the years have relegated themselves to, to, to not doing the right thing. There was no synergy between our physical and monetary policies before now. And, and now that this government have identified those things as the major problems and trying to put those things, it's not going to be easy. Like, it's not just something like you said, plus one plus one and you get two. No. There are quite some things that you have to take time to make them right again. i give you a simple example. We are talking about backward integration. For how many years we've been talking about backward integration? For how many years Nigerian companies have been given the liberty to bring in certain things and get a waiver so that they will be able to put those things back here in this country and for us to be able to generate what we can have for ourselves and what we can export? Do they abide by it? So if previous administration have paid lip services to issues of uh, uh, economic growth, and then not even looking at how our population, we are having implosion in our population. Nobody is caring to know what is going on. So this government came with a decisive decisions that in the long run, you will see that so many things will change. I know that you are going to, you are going to talk about Nigerians, there are a lot of suffering. Yes, there are a lot of suffering. But the decision of Mr. President, I'm not faulting it. And I don't think any right-thinking economist will fault what Mr. President have done in removing the subsidies, in trying to bridge our, our, our foreign exchange market, and then trying to say, look, we are not going to bring in anything into this country like food. We have every potential to be able to feed ourselves. I mean, it takes a leader to be bold to do it, no matter the circumstances. So when people are saying, oh, there is so much suffering, yes, there will be so much suffering. But what do we do? We all have to put our heads together and find a way that we will get ourselves out of where we have found ourselves. Mm -hmm. There are those who have argued that what the president met, well, uh, the president, Bola Tinobu government, uh, met on the ground on the 29th of May, was more or less a disaster of an economy, that the economy was in tatters, and that those who believe that the eight years of President uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari was, uh, was so retrogressive that it set us back 20 years, and that those who will argue that the CBN and the manner in which they operated had given, given the nation cause for concern. Um, for example, that those who say, oh, what was uh, the Senate, the House of Reps, what were they looking at? And that our economy was plummeting uh, to that extent. And uh, you gave approvers, you and your colleagues, to some of the policies of the CBN and to some of the approvers that are government. And those who have argued that, look, the governor of Edo State, Obaseki, Governor Obaseki, had argued that this, that government was busy printing money. And that came to light again after the government left office. Is it fair on Nigerians what has happened to us in the past? Uh, Sean, I've told you, uh, we have refused to manage our developmental plan. We used to have a rolling plan in this country. I can remember those days we used to have rolling plans over maybe 10, 20 years. We do not have them now, and we don't follow them. And we allow anyone that comes in to say, look, this is the policy that will work for this country, and let's do it. Not really looking in-depthly, how will those policies feature. Now, we have had a government where they have recklessly, I will say it recklessly, allow the physical responsibility to be relegated. Now that we have a government that is saying we must take responsibility of our physical responsibility act, we must act on it, and we must make sure that things are going right. When you said government has spent, government has done this, one thing I believe is that from the inception of democracy in this country, we did not get it right. Our leaders 
when they came in, maybe they just want to win elections. Maybe they want to be in that office. But they don't have a futuristic, idealistic ideology. That look, what will I do after eight years? How will I, how will I want to see Nigeria after eight years? They do not have those kind of thinking. And what do you expect today? Definitely, you will see that most of their policies are some assaulting. You will see that they are bringing more hardship to Nigerians. Now with the coming of this administration, it looks at the books and it, it found out that so many things did not go right. It takes a bold leader to be able to say, look, I must correct those anomalies I saw. And that is what President Aswajibola Ahmed Tinubu is doing. And when people are saying there are, no, there are no plans, there are no policies, I will tell you it is now that there are policies. And by the time these policies start, start translating into real actions, you will be able to understand why previously we should have planned. So with what you are saying, I will copy to telling you that what this administration is doing and what we in the legislature are doing at the moment is to give Nigeria that rightful place that it's supposed to have. But, but Senator, would you and your colleague take responsibility for some of the failings of this economy? Uh, no, no. Ways when, and when, means was approved when, when you are, where you and your colleagues were when, in the National when, Assembly. When, where, where were you? Where were you in this country? Where were you in this country? when we're supposed to fix our electricity, our power. Tell me how a manufacturer will be able to manufacture anything when there is no power. I'm talking specifically no, about no, ways no, no. means I'm, I'm coming to that. Because that I'm was a disaster. I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. So the money that has been spent so much in order to put certain things right, we are not putting right. And those modernists, we cannot know where they are today. And this is where the problem is. And when you are talking about uh, National Assembly taking responsibilities, remember, there is separation of powers. Ours is to oversight and to strictly give our resolutions, strictly provide the legislations. And we've done that. We've done it. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the issue of ways and means, will it be correct to say you did the right thing? In, in the, in, when that past when, government when, brought when, to you for approval... When, when, you are, when you are talking about ways and means being brought to a country, I mean legislature, for approval by Mr. President, there are certain factors that we have to look at. And when we look at those factors, we are not the implementers. Ours is to appropriate. We query where necessary. And I can tell you that when Wales and Mills was brought in the Ninth Assembly, three times it was rejected. Three times it was returned. And we said we must see all the breakdowns. So, and, and remember, then there were, were some policies that were not going right with Nigerians. And we, as true representatives of the people, we didn't want Nigerians to continue to suffer. So your hands were tied uh, as, as lawmakers uh, no, when that uh, was uh, brought? Our hands cannot be tied. Well, how I'm telling how you. did those things pass? Uh, watch out and see what is going to happen about the U.S. and means from the legislative act. I'm talking watch. about the one that was passed the last time uh, under I mean, the President Bola, we, uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari. We, as legislators, have every right to bring it back and look at it again. What are you, you talking about? You and your colleagues don't ever regret passing that kind no, of... I mean, I have no regret for any action that I've taken in the National Assembly. I'm talking about every, every corporately action, and collectively. Every action we did collectively, we did it in the best interest of this country. And it was a disaster in the end. If it is a disaster, then we are going to look at who created those disasters and we check those In a representative now. government, there should be uh, consequences. In the representative government, there are checks and balances. 
in a representative and that's what government. I'm talking about. And when you're if talking the executive about executive brings to you, Senator, something that is not right, isn't the duty of the legislator to curtail it and ours, stop it? Our responsibility, at the time Mr. President brought ways and means, we looked at it, we turned it back. We did that three times, and we asked for a breakdown. And when they brought the, uh, brought the breakdowns, we saw where they put everything. And when they tie it to COVID-19, when they tie it to agriculture, talking about Anko Oberos program, are we going to say, no, it has not happened? But now there's a new administration. And that was the time that the administration was exiting. There's a new administration now. And this administration, what is doing, especially the 10th Assembly, what we are doing, we are going to review everything. We are going to look at it. That's a promise to Nigerians. It's a promise to Nigerians. We are going to look at it. And it is not going to be as usual. No. Because Nigerians are just uh, have tired. I, have, have you and seen, it looks like their future you, have are, being, you, are being sold uh, on the platter. Have you, have you seen me in anything that is unusual? Have you seen me participating in anything that is unusual? I came to the National Assembly with the reputation and integrity that I'm going to do the right thing for my people. I sworn by the Quran. It's not affirmation I did. So, and fortunately, I'm a member of a committee that has just been set up. We're waiting for inauguration. What committee is that? Where some means, I do a committee to check on what happened. That we're having this large outstanding. That has been uh, 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 having a tenor of 40 years, 9% interest. Sherwin, why not we talk of ways forward? Why don't we talk about how we want to change Nigeria for good? Ask me what President that, was that, That's what, what we're doing. talking about, uh, Senator. And I'd like to ask you quick, quickly, I mean, when you talked about the fact that there, there's a need for planning, a futuristic approach to the manner in which government approach things. And, and, I, and I give a global perspective. You look at some of the communist economy, they have plans from annual plans to five-year plan. And if you look oh, at uh, some um, uh, socialist economies, they, you look at 15 uh, to 20 years plan. Uh, what are you proposing that Nigeria should have? No, no, you see, Nigeria, we used to have a rolling plan. But I can tell you with the renewed hope policies that uh, uh, the agenda that Mr. President is coming in, I mean, has came in with, I think it's a plan that Nigeria, within the next decade, we are going to be one of the advanced countries of this world. Economically. What gives you that I, confidence? I have full confidence because the initiate, I mean, what we are initiating today is futuristic. Look at, today we are just a monolithic economy. Major of our income is coming, and that is the reason why today we are facing the issue of Forex. We have tied ourselves to oil. When we will be able to feed this country, feed Africa, feed Africa, just Niger states. We have over 74,000 square kilometers of arable land. How, what is the size of Nigeria? Every sector, every section of this country is arable, can produce something. Underneath, we have God-given eh, natural resources from gold, satellites, call them. Lithium, everything we have it. What is stopping us from then using our human capital to develop these things? Why? Why not? Because I don't. Why can't we do it? Those who even so that say, is why we are putting this plan. I mean, now. we have since the, 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 those who argue that the discovery of oil is probably one of the disaster to the development of this country. Let me, let me uh, ask well, you. interestingly, interestingly, hmm, Africa economies are one of the fastest growing economies in the world today. It tells you that Africa is rising. But unfortunately, if African leaders are not able to rise up and deal with some of what has become a cultural uh, uh, melee and uh, uh, what has set us back over the years, bad leadership, we will not be able to move forward. How are we able to say this is what we stand for? We were, we were, we were known for uh, cocoa at some point. We were known for granites. We're known for rubber. We're known for textile sometimes ago. All of those heritage, 
and legacies have been swept away uh, by years of corruption. And now Nigeria is hanging on, hanging on, on production of oil that we cannot even uh, to finish the production this, this, on the ground. This, what can Nigeria this, say this, uh, in the next five years it will be able this, to be known for? This administration is not um, tying itself to oil. This administration is trying to open up all areas that you think will be self-sufficient. And again, let me tell you, this government is working on investing so much in infrastructure. You cannot have anything when the infrastructure is decayed. For well, how long? Where were you when so much billions of dollars were spent in this country to give us electricity and there is no electricity? Where were you? Railway is not working. Where were you? Today we have a president with a foresight. The blueprint that he's coming in or he has came in with, I don't know why you think it's just like pressing a button and the whole country will transform. It, anybody it, who, it understand, can, anybody who understands like the economy knows that it economy like is, that. is not really one plus one. But we do also today, know today that me, our economy today, is very sensitive, today, me, that if you do not take the right decision, just one decision, policy decision to, to, of removal of subsidies, see where we are today. No, and that's no, why that, that's those who are critical of this government and are that saying, is talking about do the right thing and be strategic. And that is why I'm telling you about infrastructure. There's more money now coming in, and there will be more infrastructural developments that will take place. So when you are talking about long-term plan, look at it. Imagine if we have railway running from Kano to Lagos. Imagine we are taking agricultural produce from Kano to Lagos. Imagine from Lagos, eh, we are taking just ordinary salt to the north. What do you think that will transform? And then imagine the kind of roads we have in this country. A president that is coming with the thinking of having a broad, broad ways for this country. Is there any better time that we should give that president support than now? Where were you when somebody overnight will be giving dollars, allocation of dollars, and you become a billionaire? Where were you? And today we said, if you want money, it's a willing buyer, willing seller policy. Go and buy it. Mm. I open. mean, if you're saying that things are going to change, for example, Nigeria needs about... Uh, 7 million plus metric tons of rice to be able to feed itself. We can only produce about 5 million. We can produce million. Look, listen. Where do, if we, for example, take that commodity alone, what do we have on the ground to show that we are serious, that we can feed ourselves we, we, with even rice? We've even tried it. What are you talking? We've tried it. We've tried it in this country when we stop rice from coming in. Are you not eating rice in your own house? You eat rice. But, Senator, in the last three years, no, no, we no, have no, not no. been able to meet up our consumption you see, in Nigeria. You see, you see when we've we add about two million metric tons that we have, uh, we needed to bring into the well, country. Well, we are not bringing in any rice into this country. I Sen can Senator, assure you that. Do you have the figures. I can assure you that we are not bringing in any rice to this country. We are going to produce rice that we will feed this country with. We are not going to go anywhere to buy rice. We will do it here. Yeah. All right. Turn we'll it do it here. I'm very hopeful and I'm very optimistic to see how these things pan out. But I've just given you one commodity that we are hoping that if this government ah. showed Nigerians how they were hoping to achieve it. But let me allow you to speak quickly on some of the uh, monetary policies. Uh, recently, we've seen uh, a clamp down on Binance, that platform. We've seen uh, for over 4,000 uh, of uh, BDC operation, operational licenses that are being uh, uh, seized by the, uh, by the CBN. Is that the right way to go? Uh, for Binance, I'm fully in support of what uh, the central bank have done. There is no country that will allow such to happen. Even in the United States, they have fined Binance. So many countries are, are kicking out Binance. So you don't allow that. And then when you're talking about the BDCs, for me, I have a different pers pers perception on that. And what I have is that a situation where the supply of Forex is very limited and the demand is always high. What I think our monetary policy should target at is creating an avenue for a swing trading. 
And when you bring swing trading into it, you give opportunity to almost every level. When the demand is high and the supply is very low, you have already bridged a, 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 a pricing index of ever plus minus whereby you will not allow the price to go as low, lower than so, 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 and you will not allow the price when, when there is a lot of supply, you know, because you, everything you're doing, you need to also check the inflationary consequences. Reaction, consequences. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do that, you give room. And then when you come to talk about uh, BDCs, I know maybe there are some, some certain regulatory standards that we're supposed to meet as a country in terms of our finances. You, you understand? Uh, then we need to, especially on the issues of money laundering, we need to regulate our BDCs and see how they can work effectively. Right. But by and large, I believe that the banks, the commercial banks in this country, the central bank need to check, need to check their books very seriously. Mm. Because I can remember in the last administration, uh, BDC, BDCs were suspended from trading by CBN for three good years. They were not being given any intervention. And all interventions were going to the banks. And you would never go to the bank and get foreign exchange. Senator, so what happened? Yeah. We Sen have billionaires that own banks overnight, and that needs to be checked. Senator, we have 30 seconds to wrap up this. And these uh, are some fears that, that some people have raised. You see the sad stories and tales of how Nigerians are looting uh, food, uh, food stores and trucks that are carrying food, and that those who are saying that this particular agitation can consume everyone in the country. How, how, what, does, how, what can this government do to stem that kind of tide? There is hardship in the land, there is hunger in the land, and there is agitation. In 30 seconds, Senator, uh, what see, is the solution? You see, in the overall, while the initial payments of subsidy is there, hmm? because of the removal of the subsidy, there are pains. But the potential gains in terms of investment, efficiency of how all the sectors will be able to, 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 to reinvigorate re, re, itself, especially like the agricultural sector, will give our economy a time that we will have long-term growth. And when we have that, you will see that the index will show that poverty will go down. And by that time, people will... But in the short time now, I'm not one that also agree with palliatives. But if we must do justice ourselves all, it's a time that everyone, every Nigerian, need to go back to the farm. All right. Thanks. Every Nigerian need to take responsibility and do the right thing. It's not going to break. Breaking places, looting people's property right. is criminality. Senator. We need to go, but I must sincerely thank you. But it's a good pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure having you talk to us on some of these very naughty issues. Senator Sani Musa is the chair of the Finance Committee in the Senate and also a senator representing Niger East in the Senate. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you. And a pleasure uh, shedding light on some of these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>